Hey guys, welcome to the video. This is just gonna be a quick tutorial about how to vectorize a picture. And I think this is a useful skill to know if you have Adobe Illustrator and you want to create more content from pictures that you've already taken. What I like to do is kind of create vector images from pictures that I really like, and that I want to kind of create uh, more varied images from. Uh, sometimes I just like the idea of the picture that I took and I want to kind of add more artistic elements to it. And using Adobe Illustrator is a really good way to do that. So what we're gonna do is just kind of go through a step-by-step -step simple process about how to take one picture and turn it into a vector image that you could modify or kind of change artistically if you wanted to create something completely different. So what we're going to do is we're going to just jump right into Illustrator right now. So here I have the picture that I want to use and this is just a picture of my buddy wearing a virtual reality headset and this is just in the mountains. So I thought this one would be interesting to vectorize. So you can see I worked on this one. Oops, let's just get rid of this guy so you can have a look. But uh, basically what I did was just traced over it, added a few little gray here and there and mainly this whole thing was created using the pen tool. I have a few adjustments I still want to make on this one before it's complete but you can kind of see the idea that I'm going for. So let's just jump back to this image and we're just going to go through how to kind of trace around the image, uh, what tools to use and kind of the order in which you want to do these things. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the pen tool. So we're going to go up here, click the pen tool and now we have that as our cursor. And if we want to get closer to the image, if we want to see more detailed how we're tracing things, we can hit control plus, 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 and that will allow us to kind of see the details that we're going to be tracing around. So what I'd like to do first is just trace all around the image of the person. Um, and so this will just give us an outline to work with. So let's start with that. We're going to hit just right at the edge here, and then we're going to start creating. So when you click with the pen tool, it's going to give you a line. And if you click and hold, you're going to be able to bend the line that you're working on. So if I click and hold and drag, I'll be able to create more extreme angles depending on how long I make this line, how long I make the uh, gradient of the curve. If I want to just make kind of a short little one, like a quick detailed one like I need for this, I'll just go about here. And then if I want to click on the, the anchor point that I've set here, I can create a new curve. So this is going to kind of make a straight line right now. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just click and hold and we're just going to kind of trace this outline. So. Let's just create these first few little ones and then we'll move up to the bigger ones. So we can go around these curves like this, just taking care to get as accurately as we possibly can for all the little details. We're gonna go around the string and then we're gonna finish the hoodie right up here. And I'm just gonna go around this really quickly and then I'll speed it up so that we don't have to spend too much time just watching me trace these basic parts. So let's go ahead and fast forward. Now here's an interesting point. Let's say you have your fill on and you have a stroke on the shape that you're using. If you wanna see through the fill, all you have to do is change your opacity. So what I can do with my pen tool is just go over here to the opacity menu and it says 100% right now. Since this is white, I can't see through it, it's too opaque. So if I just wanna see through it, I can just adjust that down to uh, 50. Uh, alternatively, I can just get rid of the fill so I can click on this little icon here and hit none and then I don't have to see it and I can just see the little tracing tool. Um, sometimes I like to work with the fill on just to see kind of what's going on, but uh, yeah, you can turn that off if it makes it easier for you. You can turn the stroke off if it makes it easier for you. Uh, these will just kind of fill up the shape or give it an outline. So it depends on what you prefer working with. I actually like working with the fill on for whatever reason. So I'm just going to click back to white and I'm just gonna work with this on. So we're gonna continue doing our outline. We're just gonna follow it around. All right, we've come to the end of just the outline tracing here. Now just to complete this, what I wanna do is just go back to my original anchor point where I started and just click that. I was gonna close off our shape and then I'm gonna hit control minus minus just to zoom out here. So now you can see we created this outline. I'm just gonna change it, the opacity again here. I'm gonna change this back to 100%. So you can kind of see the outline we're working with. So if I were to color this just black for a second, you can kind of see that we're gonna have this baseline to work with. And then what we're gonna wanna do is just build the rest of our shapes on top of this. So I'm gonna change my opacity back down to about, uh, I don't know, we're at 30% or something like that. Now we can see all the details, but we still have the outline underneath this. So what I wanna focus on next is kind of creating outlines for all of the bigger features. So what I wanna do is focus on obviously the headset here, the hoodie, 
the jawline and probably just the beard. And we could also focus on the ears, but just like the basic bigger features that are gonna kind of be their own little sections that we're gonna break down and work on. You can see by this other picture that I've kind of broken things down into different color palettes. So I've changed the color of the headset to orange, but you can see this is kind of one of its own little units. The hoodie itself is another contained unit. And then I just work on all the facial features as their own little sections and units. You can see the neck is its own little unit uh, and different parts of the head are its own unit with gradients. The ear is different little components. So I just kind of stack little shapes on top of it. I'm not sure if this is how everybody does it, but this is how it's been working for me quite well. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the headset. We'll isolate that. We'll create our own little outline for that. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did before with the pen tool. There's a lot of work done with the pen tool because it's so useful. It's so detailed. And uh, what I'm going to want to do here is just hit V again. I just want to select my shape. I want it to be a little bit more. Um, a little bit more visible for my outline here. Then I'm gonna hit P, that's the shortcut for the pen tool. If it works, hit P, there we go. We've got our pen tool, the little icons back. So now what I wanna do is just trace around the headset, uh, just focus on those bigger sections. So let's go ahead and begin that. And again, we're at the kind of end of our little shape here, this little section. So I'm gonna go back to my original anchor point, click and hold. I'm just gonna create a little bit of a curve around the ear and this little section's done. So let's give this some color and we're gonna change our opacities back to kind of 100%. Let's go with an orange color, just cause orange is easy to see. So we've got that section, we've got the background section. So you can kind of see we're starting to just stack things. You can also notice that there's gonna be a lot of little um, pieces that, uh, let's click on this and zoom in a little bit. You can see how there's gonna be pieces here where it's not perfectly lined up. This is because I'm rushing, but there's also a few little things you can do to adjust your mistakes. So let's go over those really quickly. So on the pen tool, you're gonna have a couple other little options. What you're gonna do is right click and you're gonna see add anchor point, delete anchor point, or just the anchor point tool. So let's click on the add anchor point tool. Let's say there was a little section here that you just wanted to add an extra little curve to. So we're gonna find the path. We're gonna find the edge of our path. We're gonna click, we're gonna be able to add a little anchor point here and that's gonna allow us to manipulate it a little bit better. So uh, what I can do to manipulate this anchor point now is hit A and this is going to give us um, access to the direct selection tool. And this is just going to allow us to click on our anchor points and then adjust them. So we can just drag this on out a little bit. Now there's still a little bit of a, a problem here. Obviously I would have wanted to just curve this a little bit better just to follow the curvature of the outline behind it. But since we're kind of doing a tutorial here, it's not gonna be quite as clean. And if you go back to the other image here, I can just show you real quick. Control plus, 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 plus. We're gonna just zoom in. You can see I've gone a little bit better to follow the edges of what I'm trying to what I'm trying to do. So uh, my curvature is a little bit more accurate, but this is a good way to kind of adjust the little mistakes that you make um, and just get things to line up a little bit better. So we've got our two sections here now. Uh, the third big section I think is probably gonna be the hoodie. So I'm gonna change the opacity on my main background. Now, before we start, I just wanna point something out here. We've got a layers panel in the side and what layers is gonna allow you to see this is just gonna be the one thing that we're kind of working on. Uh, it's going to allow you to see the different paths that you're working on. And I like to think about these like pieces of paper that you're just kind of stacking. The first original one that is the outline that we were using. Uh, this is the first piece of paper on the ground. And then on top of that, we're gonna stack another one, which is this little section here. And we're just gonna keep stacking layers on top of layers, making shapes on top of shapes until we have the exact kind of detail that we want at the end of it. So if we close this, go back to the other one that's a little bit more finished, then we'll hit layers here and you can see that it's just a whole array of shapes that have been stacked one on top of the other and so this is just what gives us um, kind of a composition effect so uh, this allows us to have multiple shapes and different variations of detail uh, stacked on top of each other so the overall shape is still there the overall outline that i originally created is still there underneath everything but in general it's just kind of a guideline for adding the detailed shapes on top of it so we're gonna go back here. Uh, let's finish off our shape just with the hoodie. And then we'll just go over a few other little quick techniques that are gonna help you sort yourself out. All right, so we've got our little hoodie shape here. I'm just gonna change this to gray instead of black. 
So let's just go over the fill options on the side here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that background piece again, and we're just gonna change our opacity back up here. So we've kind of got an outline to a shape here. Um, and what we're gonna be able to do is just change different elements of this. So for the most part, I'm gonna be working without a stroke. So there's these two icons on the side and these are going to allow me to adjust fill and stroke. And what these are going to be helpful with is just basically changing the color of it, or if we wanted to add an outline to it. So in general, when I'm doing uh, vectorizing for pictures, I'm just gonna to choose to work with a fill. So I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on this if I wanted to adjust it. Let's say we wanted bright green goggles this time. Uh, and let's say for the hoodie, we just wanted to change it to, I don't know, let's go with pink. And that looks pretty crazy. Um, but you can see this will just allow us to adjust the colors of it and it'll allow us to kind of see the sections that we're working on. As you can see, I can adjust the other little uh, sections that are gonna be on the hoodie. I bring out that pen tool again and we can just kind of create all of these other little detailed sections. So again, I'm not gonna go through every little section that I'm doing here because that's just way too time consuming. Um, but it will allow me to create and stack these little images. Okay, so we can work on these individual sections more, but what I'm gonna do is just pop back over to the one that's a little bit more complete, just to show you where we can get to. So all of these shapes, all of these kind of cutout sections, again, it's not very clean here. I apologize, I'm not quite finished yet, but you can see I've just layered these shapes on top of the outlines that I created underneath. And you can see the original outline that I had, um, but in general, this is kind of the direction I'm heading in. Uh, the, with each layer you add on top, you're adding more detail. And what I tend to do is wait until the very end to add my background in. Now in the layer section, what you can do is just adjust the layers um, position or it's kind of hierarchy, it's rank. So let's say I have my mountains in the background. I see the little pathway here. If I pull this above everything, it's gonna get in front of it. Now obviously that looks silly, so I don't want that. Uh, so I'll just hit Control Z and send it back to its original position. But um, you can adjust the layers here and you can get rid of certain layers. But what this is going to allow you to do is, let's say you wanted to keep your human, but you wanted to adjust the background, which is what I'm going to be doing. I wanna keep the virtual reality person, but since I want to uh, display kind of different backgrounds or different settings, I wanna adjust the mountains or what have you. So what I can do is just delete the layers that have the mountains in them and then create something new. But if I want to put it behind everything, I can do one of two things. I can either right click on it and sorry, let's click on it, then right click on it. Then we're gonna go to arrange and we can say send to back and this will put it behind everything. And so if I put a new background in and I want it to be behind my person, I just have to remember that its rank needs to be at the bottom. So I'm gonna control Z and just bring that back. So that's generally how you vectorize things. It's a lot of work with the pen tool. It's a lot of work with just changing your colors and kind of adding and taking away certain elements and just being detailed in how you follow your curves and how you stack your different elements on top of one another. So there's, there's kind of a certain art to it and uh, definitely to get everything closed off and looking really clean and perfect takes some time and effort. I'm obviously not perfect at it, but uh, yeah, just take your time, get the detailed work down and you'll be able to get a lot more out of the pictures that you're creating. So I can sell this one now as a picture, or I can sell this one as um, sell this one as a vector. Now, if you actually want to um, sell these vectors online, what you can do is export them as EPS files. So how we do that is we just go into File. Uh, we're going to go into Save As. And then instead of an Adobe Illustrator file, we're going to save this as an EPS, an Illustrator EPS file. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. I'm going to hit save. And then it's going to pull up this little menu. Now you can't currently sell on Shutterstock Illustrator CC EPS. We'll have to go down to the highest one that they currently have, which is Illustrator 10 EPS. And I'll go ahead and click on that. It's going to give me a couple little warnings, but then I'll be able to hit OK and that will export my file as an EPS file. And that's what you're gonna be able to upload to stock agencies. Uh, for some stock agencies, you're also going to need a JPEG. And so we can do the same thing. We can just go down to export in this case and export as, 
and we can just export it as a JPEG. So in this little drop down menu, you're going to have JPEG and you're going to be able to export your image as a JPEG. This means it won't be able to be adjusted. It has the same sort of digital impact as a photograph. So it's just going to be saved as a JPEG. You probably know about JPEGs. And I'm just going to go ahead and cancel because I don't want to do that quite yet. So I hope that video was useful to you. I hope it kind of gave you an idea of how to trace around an image. Hopefully you are able to now export it in the format that you want it to. Uh, it's just, again, a very useful skill to know how to do. It's good to be able to trace around an image, get more content from the um, from the pictures that you've taken. And it's just a fun way to learn how to use Illustrator as well. It's good to start in a, from a basic point uh, so that you're not trying to create something completely new. Uh, it just gives you kind of a background image to work off of and just a kind of harness your skills and to just see how the workflow with Illustrator goes. It takes a while to get used to it, but it is a very useful skill to learn. And as if you're doing graphic design, if you're taking pictures, it just kind of works in well with those skills. It lets you create elements to work with in Premiere Pro um, and in Photoshop and all this other stuff. So it's, it's just a very useful skill to learn how to, how to do. Thanks for watching the video. I hope the tutorial was useful to you. If you have any questions or comments, you can throw them in the section down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.